City County Planning Commission, please come to order. Ms. Martin, would you please call the roll for us? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Rich? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Vitale? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Balance? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Clark? Yes. Commissioner Unseld? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Graham? Commissioner Volkert? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Gay? Commissioner Warren? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Madison? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Houston? Chair Runner? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Commissioners, you all have the uh, summary minutes of the August 15th meeting. Are there any corrections to those minutes? No corrections, I'd ask for a motion. So moved. Thank you, and a second, please. Second. Commissioner Rich? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Vitale? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Balance? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Clark? Yes. Commissioner Unseld? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Volkert? Same. Commissioner Warren? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Madison? Same. Chair Runner? Yes, ma'am. Or please order that the record include all statutory and regulatory provisions, the commission's entire file for each application, and the qualifications for each staff witness. Finally, I'd request that you administer those to those witnesses. So ordered, and do you swear to tell the truth before this commission? Thank you all. You have the... Uh, subdivision and site development plans the preliminary approvals in your packet any any questions on those no questions we'll move down to the letters of credit and performance bond the original agenda had uh, three items if you look at your seat you should have an amended agenda tonight with three extra items bringing that to six items any questions on those six items no questions i'd ask for a motion please we'll move thank you in a second Thank you. Commissioner Rich? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Vitale? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Balance? Yes, Commissioner Clark? Yes, Commissioner Unseld? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Volkert? Yes, ma Commissioner Warren? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Madison? Yes, ma Chair Runner? Yes, ma'am. We don't have any unfinished business, and that brings us up to enter into the public hearing. Uh, com uh, Ms. Runner, we have had a request on item number five uh, for you all to consider a recess. So I think we have several people here for that. So it might be appropriate to go ahead and call that one and ask uh, their legal counsel to ask uh, and see if that is still the case. Thank you, sir. We will jump to item five on the public hearing items. That would be docket number 20, 1937ZBG. Mirsad Alec and Tim Wheeler have filed an application to rezone a portion of tracts of land containing approximately 73.06 acres located at 6309 Russellville Road from agriculture and general business to highway business, RM4 multifamily residential, and light industrial with the general development plan. And we have their attorney present, Mr. Davenport. Good evening, Chair Runner. Uh, Chris Davenport on behalf of the applicants. Uh, Mr. Peterson is correct. I am requesting a recess on this application. I have <clears throat> learned somewhat through the grapevine that there was some interest in this application. There had been a request made for an opportunity, hopefully for my client and myself to discuss with those individuals. I can only assume that a good number of the people here tonight do have interest and or some opposition to this application. So I would encourage if we do recess this two weeks, those individuals to please meet me outside and I will give them my contact information with the hopes that there can be some meaningful discussions in the meantime. And that, that, that would be our request, Chair Runner. Thank you. And uh, questions, commissioners? Before Y'all had a neighborhood meeting yet, Chris? We did not, Commissioner Warren. Um, of course, that's not required anymore we, I, have, I haven't done one of those for a couple years but this frankly given the feedback that I've heard is sometimes I don't really think those are warranted but this is a case where I think it may be helpful frankly so I'm not sure we'll have a formal meeting but my hope is that these folks will get my information and we can have that dialogue and see at least maybe find some middle ground I, again not knowing entirely what their uh, opposition is but we want to have that opportunity that'll be tonight in the lobby uh, it would be the start of it okay. I'm not sure how mean how meaningful our discussions will be tonight but okay. we can start that dialogue thank you Chris you're welcome thank you so you're Peterson. asking for continuance to you, continue it for yes ma'am two weeks for the for that to take place give us that date do you have that date that we can announce if September 19th 2019 at 6 p.m. in this room 
September the 19th, 6 p.m. in this room. Any other questions before I ask for a motion? No other questions? Then I'd ask for a motion, please. I make a motion that we, uh, at the applicant's request, continue this hearing for two weeks and adjourn back here in two weeks to uh, once again bring this before the commission. Thank you, ma'am. We need a second. Second. Thank you. Commissioner Rich? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Vitale? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Ballance? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Clark? Yes. Commissioner Unseld? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Volkert? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Warren? Ma'am. Commissioner Madison? Ma'am. Chair Runner? Yes, ma'am. Thank you all. Have a good evening. Thank you. The motion carried. And um, if you did not hear Mr. Davenport, anyone that has an interest in this application that outside in the hallway, he can give you contact information. And so you all can go ahead and we'll, we'll wait a second for the room to clear. Just one clarification, Th this will not be re-advertised. We may change the sign date, but we will not re-advertise it or, or probably send out letters because it, it's set for two weeks from today here. So we will not probably. It's yeah. September the 16th, I mean the 19th. 19th. September the 19th at 6 p.m. Two weeks from tonight. We'll give them just a few required to few minutes to clear. It's already passed. <laughs> it might be done early though. I technically could even mail out letters, but it won't be there until like two days before the meeting. Don't know. We can probably go ahead now. Oh boy, yeah, there ain't. Okay, I think we've got it now. We can go ahead and continue. We'll go back to item one under the public hearings, docket number 2019-08-DP. Jackson White has filed an application to amend the general development plan, which are the development plan conditions on a track of land containing approximately 5.66 acres located at 5851 Scottsville Road. Property is zoned highway business with a general development plan. And we will have the staff report from Ms. Hurt. Thank you, Chair Runner. We had a pre-application conference on July the 10th for the property you mentioned here at 5851 Scottsville Road, outlined in yellow on the screen. And as you mentioned, the applicants are requesting to amend the general development plan, which would include the development plan conditions for this property. The current zoning of the property is highway business, and it was rezoned to highway business in 2012. The current use of the property is commercial, and you can see that there are a mixture of uses in the area, ranging from single family to multifamily, agriculture, public institutional, industrial. So there, there are several types of uses out this way along Scottsville Road. And then for the future land use map, we have two designations. The first is commercial, which is the overwhelming majority of the property. And it's hard to see on the screen, but there's a little tiny little sliver of mixed use residential in that corner there. I think the, the yellow line covers it up. Um, so I'm not going to read through the description for the mixed use residential category, but I will go through the commercial description for your reference. This future land use designation consists of a broad array of commercial development 
including individual commercial businesses that may exist along a highway corridor or a business district, as well as larger planned shopping centers and office parks. Limited high density multifamily uses are allowed to be mixed into commercial areas, and these uses should be limited to upper stories or blended in or scattered among commercial uses. No more than 25% of any contiguous area designated commercial should contain multifamily uses. Compatibility should be addressed by applying the policies in LU113 in conjunction with the general development plan. So with that, I'm going to jump to the conceptual layout or the general development plan that was submitted by the applicants, and I'm gonna move on to the site characteristics review. This is the proposed layout um, that is shown here on the screen. There is a uh, commercial building proposed up front here, and I'll uh, get to a few items in just a second that kind of describe how the property would develop if, if you approve this application. Um, and then there are also uh, five more commercial buildings that are planned toward the rear portion of the property. Under natural features, we've noted, I'll go back to the aerial so you can see what I'm referencing, that there are several mature trees and other vegetative buffering located around the perimeter of the property along the northern and western property lines. Next on page three, just touching on the surrounding architectural features, uh, staff has noted that the area contains a mixture of residential and commercial properties of varying ages, mainly ranging from one to two stories in height. Under building orientation, uh, the applicant has agreed, and I will jump back to the preliminary development plan here, uh, that the buildings within 150 feet of Scottsville Road on this plan, that would be this main building up here at front, uh, would be uh, designed in such a way to appear to face Scottsville Road regardless of the driveway access and parking. Under landscaping and screening, the applicants have agreed that the landscaping will follow the standards in the zoning ordinance as well as buffering the adjacent residential uses by a 10 foot wide vegeta vegetative buffer, retaining the existing mature, mature, oh my gosh, I'm sorry, mature tree canopy insofar as practicable as stated in the development plan conditions. Moving on to the area specific policy review, this property is located within the boundary of the Scottsville Road Corridor study that was adopted by the Planning Commission in 2015. The proposal complies with the majority of the recommendations from this study, but there were three items that we felt the Planning Commission should evaluate for compliance. So I will touch on those. There are three starting on page four under building materials. So the recommendation states a building material requirement for both residential and non-residential development for facades facing Scottsville Road. The applicant committed in development plan condition number 10 that the building facades of all buildings within 150 feet of Scottsville Road shall be constructed of 70% brick, ephus, stone, or modern masonry or cementitious material, split face block, or other decorative block. Buildings more than 150 feet from Scottsville Road, so that would be in general, um, basically from here back, so those five commercial buildings to the rear, will be constructed of architectural metal with a minimum of 20% brick, ephus, stone, modern masonry, or cementitious material, split face block, or other decorative block, with one evergreen per 15 feet of side facing facade, side facade facing Scottsdale Road. So that would be the, the facades up here that are facing Scottsville Road. Architectural metal buildings will incorporate concealed fasteners on the sides facing Scottsville Road. So again, that'd be the sides that are facing Scottsville Road on, so on this side. And plain face blocks shall not be used as a visible exterior finished material in any building. So the Planning Commission should determine if the proposal complies with this recommendation relating to building materials. Next, relating to signage, a requirement that all new signage be monument style with a lower square footage cap as well as prohibiting LED signs. The applicants committed in development plan condition number three that signage shall be monument style and shall not exceed 15 feet in height or 150 square feet in sign face area. No additional LED signs will be installed. And just for reference, the zoning ordinance permits freestanding signage in the highway business zone up to 150 square feet. Next, under the parking requirements, a requirement that either no parking be allowed in the building setback along Scottsville Road or to have parking to the rear of the building <coughs> as long as the rear is not Scottsville Road. The applicant stated in development plan condition number seven that no parking will be allowed within 25 feet, uh, within the 25 foot setback fronting Scottsville Road 
and you'll see here that the preliminary development plan does depict some parking um, to be located in front of the proposed building so the Planning Commission should determine compliance with this recommendation with that I'll move on to the proposed changes in the development plan conditions on page 5 I've already touched on some of these items so I won't repeat the ones that I've already mentioned um, but just starting out with number one and two these are more housekeeping items these are required regardless of whether or not they're in the development plan conditions so just just to shorten things up the applicants are proposing to delete those but those are still requirements that they would have to adhere to um, number one relates to underground utilities all utilities including infrastructure within the right-of-way will be located underground that's a new condition that they're proposing with this application number two access to the property the property will have one access point to Scottsville Road the location of which will be approved by the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet and there will be no access to adjacent residential uses I already touched on signage uh, moving down to number four roof level screening roof level HVAC electrical transformers and similar facilities shall be screened from public view number five um, there was a reference to landscaping just to, uh, following the minimum requirements of the zoning ordinance but that's also already required so they're now proposing um, just to include text relating to the buffering that I mentioned earlier uh, there are no changes proposed to green space or setbacks uh, for parking along Scottsville Road and then number eight there's a proposal to remove the hours of operation restriction and then the applicant has also included a building height requirement stating that no building on the property shall be constructed to exceed two stories in height and then there are some changes in number nine to the prohibited uses some of the uses um, well actually the ones that are crossed out mulch manufacturing transfer station landfill uh, adult entertainment manufactured home sales those are not permitted in highway business so even though it looks like they're removing those it's not to say that those will be allowed um, but then they did add billboard as a prohibited use outside storage within 100 feet of Scottsville Road and then they also added bingo parlor or any establishment conducting games of chance other than char charitable gaming provided that this restriction shall not prohibit the sale of lottery tickets incidental to a business tattoo parlor and any establishment selling or exhibiting pornographic materials next on page six I already touched on the building materials um, but they have added a requirement in number 11 that the property will be developed with a community mailbox system next on page six we have our zoning ordinance reference 3128 which outlines the requirements to amend a development plan and it states that amend, an amendment to any development plan for an sorry an amendment to any development plan condition for an approved development plan shall be approved only if the proposed amendment remains consistent consistent with the adopted comprehensive plan and upon a finding that there have been major changes of an economic physical or social nature within the area of the property in question which were not anticipated at the time of the adoption of the general development plan that is being amended or that there have developed physical conditions which would not permit development of property in question in accordance with the general development plan or development plan that is being amended and on page seven the applicants did submit a narrative to help address these requirements the uh, the first paragraph there is more so a summary of the changes I just highlighted in the development plan conditions so I'm going to jump down to the second half and the applicants have stated that since the adoption of the original binding elements there have been major changes of an economic physical and or social nature within the area of this property which were not anticipated at the time the original binding elements were adopted first the landscape operation which existed on the property failed several years ago next since the property was rezoned to highway business the BCTA properties LLC PUD adjoining the subject property on its southern boundary has begun a dense multifamily development on 2.9 acres of 30 units in addition to a commercial building which fronts Scottsville Road next the Planning Commission staff has completed the Scottsville Road corridor study guidelines for development in this area in the restated development plan conditions the applicant has complied with the recommendations outlined in the Scottsville Road corridor study 
And then last development of mixed commercial uses per the restated development plan conditions will be in compliance with the future land use map. So moving on to the focus 2030 category review on page eight, staff evaluated 18 items. The planning commission should determine compliance with eight of these items. First, LU113, which looks at compatibility. The planning commission should determine if the proposed changes to the development plan are compatible with the area. Next, LU2 and LU2.1, which look at quality of development. The planning commission should determine if the proposal is a high quality development that includes design standards tailored to preserve the character of the area. Next, LU252 and HN1.2, which deal with infill development. The Planning Commission should determine if the proposed infill development is compatible with the surrounding area. Next, HN1 and HN1.3, which look at character of the area. The Planning Commission should determine if the proposed development is a compatible infill project that will preserve and enhance the character of the area. And last, ED1, which looks at economic development. And the Planning Commission should determine if the proposed development will help to diversify the local economy. And last, I'm going to jump back to page one with the points to consider. Staff has noted that the proposed amendment remains consistent with the commercial future land use map designation. And then we have also noted that the proposed development complies with the applicable criteria addressed in the site characteristics review and complies with the majority of the review criteria for site design. Compatibility of the proposed changes to the development plan should be, ter should be determined by the Planning Commission. And I believe that is all I have for the staff report, but I'm happy to answer any questions. And I know the applicants are here as well. Is, um, do we know, is this storage units? No, they're not storage units. Okay. Well, do we have any idea what yeah. it's gonna it, be? There is no restriction no, in, in the prohibited uses that would prohibit that, but the, the plan that's shown before you does not incorporate storage units. Are they just going to be freestanding buildings, um, strip centers? Maybe a better question for the applicants. Okay. I'm not sure of the details of the buildings right. toward the rear. Number seven, uh, this is the applicant stated on page number uh, four. Sure. The applicant stated that no parking will be allowed in 25 feet set back fronting Scottsville Road. Prelim preliminary document plan depicts that a portion of the parking for the building close to Scottsville Road be located in front of the building. Proposal requires this recommendation. So there's no parking on, in the front of Scottsville Road? So the, the recommendation, there's two parts to the recommendation from the study. One is that no parking be located within the building setback, which would be within 25 feet of the front property line along Scottsville Road. And then there's another portion of the recommendation that suggests that parking be located to either the rear or side of the building so that would be basically saying here's the front facade and that the parking should be located to the side or rear so they comply with a portion of the recommendation because they've prohibited parking within the building setback but there are plans to have some of the parking in front of the building that's in compliance it's in compliance with a portion of the recommendation and it is just a recommendation so there are several recommendations and so it's just kind of up to you all to to determine what's important and weigh your decision accordingly thank you mm -hmm. any other questions before we hear from the applicant commissioners nothing else miss thomas evening commissioners I'm Linda Thomas I'm a little short um, but I represent the owner of this 5.67 plus acres Jack White and he has he is here tonight his project manager Chris Gearhart is here and Aaron Arnold his surveyor is here tonight and uh, we'd be happy to answer any questions that you all may have uh, I'd like to call Jack White if I may please You would state your name and address, please. Jack White, my name is 2085 Barron River Road. And you swear to tell the yes. truth. Yes, Thank you. Okay. Mr. White, are you the sole owner of this 5.67 acres? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and you are asking to restate your development plan conditions. <laughs> and uh, you rezoned this property to highway business back in two 2012, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Since 2012, 
Have there been some changes out there on that property? I think the whole neighborhood has changed out there and, and uh, you know, due to the age of our building and everything and the way it looked, uh, we felt at this point in time for what we want to do future-wise, it was best to take the building down and just start up with new instead of that particular structure. So we, uh, we have proposed this application and we've kind of got a little picture here of a building we we're considering for that front uh, we want it to it's gonna comply pretty good with up up the road where the peach tree center is mr. Uh, white is this a, a photograph of the carpenter dent building in Scottsville Kentucky? it is it's is correct. this what you're planning to have your current building look like or the front of your building not not perfectly like that because that's somebody else's building but this is the style that we're going to stay with for that front building yes, it is. and it does whoops, it does depict a little parking right here in front but that is beyond the 25 foot setback from Scottsville Road oh yes to put all the parking in the back of a building like that would be I mean it it can be done, but it would be tough. I mean, most people want to come up to the front of the building to come in. Uh, you know, we could discuss turning the building, a, you know, a longer direction to put the parking in between as a possibility. Uh, but this this is a style. We want the brick, the mortar, the stone. You know, I'm, we're going to put up a nice building. We're trying to move some retail out that way. Uh, we've had a lot of requests uh, while we're doing the project from folks. Uh, we had one group there, Fuel Nutrition's, was interested. Uh, we've had a lot of the neighbors hoping we can uh, draw that type of client on out there and some service type industry. Right. Well, <clears throat> the other buildings that you're talking about building on the, on the property, will they look somewhere similar to it, that building? They won't quite have this front. They'll be more of, uh, of course, they won't be facing Scottsville Road sure. whatsoever. And sure. they'll be, I think, probably 100, and 100, 150 feet back. Aaron, help me with that. Uh, but they will be more of a stone, I must say, like could be uh, a concrete block type thing, not a flake, you know, a face, but a decorative. And then we'll have, they'll have windows and nice doors in them. But you're planning on building other buildings for other retail? Yes. Okay. That would be the same. Sure. It, they're going to consist basically, you know, you'd have the, the brick and the mortar like the planning, the planning commission has asked or these folks here. And, you know, they will look nice. They'll be nice. So, that this be made an exhibit before so let me ask you one other question. The back of the buildings, if I'm looking at your site, the back of the buildings on the left side that will back up to the residential that's being, or multifamily that's being built there, what will the back of the buildings look like? They're probably going to have some block and some uh, metal on the back side. Uh, the residential that come in there, uh, I, I feel that surely we've helped it some because we've, you know, we're taking that property level way down where it's don't seem to be a, like a ditch anymore through there. So we, we're dropping our property level over there along them houses almost 10 feet. And there's also a 10 foot vegetative buffer between you, your property and the residential uses. Correct. Is that correct, Mr. And White? That's correct, and I think in Mr. Heimer's plan also, there is supposedly he is going to erect a fence along that property line. What about where will your dumpster sit for the on this piece of land? They will be. Uh, honestly, Aaron, can you help me with that? I mean, they're not definitely going to be up front. We need to swear you in. Yes, if you state your name and address. Aaron Arnold. Scottsdale Drive, Bowling Green, Kentucky. And you swear to tell the truth? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, so it looks like this monitor, uh, we've got several locations um, the mouse is hovering over uh, mm -hmm. one proposed dumpster location, uh, and then we have another one over here to the side that's going to be uh, 
hidden by the landscaping that is uh, required along that. Will be fit. Will be fenced. Huh? Will it be fenced. Uh, by, by no, I mean, will there be a fence around? Fenced with a certain height to right. screen the dumpster or with an opaque planting all the way around on three sides, with the exception of the front if you have doors so you can still access the dumpster. Are you uh, anticipating putting little small businesses in there or do you have a large business that you're gonna put in one building or? What the, exactly are you anticipating? The, the back buildings, of course, the front buildings are going to be about between 1,900 to 2,200 square foot. If we have a customer that can use more than one, they can rent more than one. The larger buildings are about the same size buildings in the back are going to be set up the same way. You, if you would like to rent the complete building, you have that option or you can rent at least, I think them buildings are gonna be right around 2,250 square feet sections, but the sections won't be put up until the customer has give us a plan of what they want there. Uh, you, don't, you, have an, do you have restaurants anticipated or, I know I've seen beef, your parking, but I'm not yeah. sure why that parking is. We have had some interest, uh, nobody has, uh, you know, wrote us a check or anything yet, but we've had some inquiries since we started processing the land of what we're going to do out there. And, you know, a restaurant type thing would, would definitely fit in there and I think would do real well out there. I think so too, but if you're going to put like restaurants and nice businesses, then, you know, block face is not very appealing. Well, especially to yes, the residential around there. Right. But the building we're going to look at doing that with is not going to be block face. That's going to move on back into the second section, and I mean we're open to, you know, if it can't be blocked, we can make it. I'm not talking about, you know, when you talk about block, there's a lot of nice block buildings around on Scottsville Road. I think there's a uh, a car dealership there, used cars, you know, that I think used to be the yard park. You know, they have a facial block type thing, and it's painted really nice. I think, I think it looks okay. Uh, I think if you're going to be looking more to a restaurant type uh, occupant, they're going to want to come to the front building. Does that help you? It does, but I, I, you know, I just would like to see more ornate and nice buildings out there. I mean, if you're going to change all these, um, your general plans, then I would like to see less metal and less block and more brick and stone and nice nice buildings we're incorporating that into it absolutely would you be willing would you be willing to commit to more brick a bigger percentage of yes, brick commissioner yes ma'am commissioner could it be brick or stone sure i think okay. uh, We've got 20% now. What are you, what are you thinking? Uh, 60 or 70. At least 60 to 70. Yeah. I, could, I think we'd be okay at 50. I mean, we just have to go back and look at the design of the buildings. Uh, of course, the cost is going to escalate quite a bit. Uh, and, uh, but we want them to look good. You know, uh, we want to build a building that people are going to be desirable and be proud of it. It's in their neighborhood. Uh, I think it will, uh, I think our buildings, the, fr <laughs> the front building definitely, the back buildings, we can incorporate some more brick or stone or something like that into them. If we can. Is that you're willing to amend your. PC uh, number 10. 10. Your ge general, de your development plan condition number 10 to, I in the second paragraph, increase the 20% to 50%, and that would be 50% brick, ephus, stone, modern masonry, or cementitious material. Yes, sir. May I ask one question, Hamp? 
force? Uh, I guess so the way that condition reads that would also include split face block and decorative block in that 50% the way it's worded. Is that correct? Uh, I think he intended to exclude that. But that I think we're asking for stone. So the 50%. Okay, the split delete the split block. face block or other decorative block. And you're going to leave mm -hmm. the um, evergreen requirement? Split face block or other decorative block or just the split face? So you'd look, it's the proposal that they ask you to approve to delete split face block or other decorative block. Is that agreeable? Yes, sir. And we'll leave in the requirement that one evergreen per 15 feet of facade facing Scottsville Road will remain. Any other questions? The other concern I have is you're taking out the hours of operation. So you're saying you could have something open 24 hours a day? That would be a concern for any residential around there, for sure. Uh, the reason we is asking for that is if we did get some restaurant type business, it might be open, you know, later at night. I think we had a seven o'clock in there or five o'clock before. I can't remember, but uh, seven a.m. to eight p.m. Yeah, yeah. I could, you know, I could see someone coming in there and having longer operating hours than that. I mean, you know, they could. You know, a restaurant or something could come in there and, you know, they'd want to start serving breakfast at 6 o'clock and maybe be open until 10, 12 o'clock at night. I mean, you know, we gotta we got to have something to draw there. And I know we do have some residential area coming in around us, but... Uh, okay, go on. Could we do like 6 a.m. till 1? Maybe. I'd like to see it cut off at midnight, honestly. The only reason, the only reason, the only reason I might agree with them on, on the 1 is if it was a Domino's pizza or something on, on, the, on an end cap. I mean, you know, they're, they're probably there to 1 o'clock. Um, exactly. Or, I, don't, I don't want to limit your businesses, so. I but, think. I, I, but I do agree. I, I don't think we want something at three o'clock in the morning coming in and out of that next to that residential. One a.m. Then, so the, Mr. White, the proposal is to amend uh, development plan condition number eight to uh, limit the hours between six a.m. and uh, one a.m. each day. What we will do is add a new. DPC number 12, since number eight addresses building height. Good suggestion. I think we can do that. I like your project. I think it will be. I mean, I like the project. I, I like working on it right now, aren't you? Yes, sir. We we've got the grade permits in place, and yeah. we're starting. I like it. To, I mean, everything's going to move. We realize that things are coming out Scottsville Road. Well, and, and you know, I'm not by no means implying we have a McDonald's or anything like that that's looking at that property. But you know, when we really start looking at restricting these hours, you know, we could be restricting more of the larger chain type people from maybe being interested in the properties out there. But, you so know, I- Just I, just for reference, I'll just mention, I just looked up Culver's and Sonic that are both out that way and Culver's closes at 10 p.m. Sonic at midnight, so. Okay. so. You can stay in compliance with, you know, I, I think one o'clock would be great. I mean, uh, I don't have a problem with that. Do the commissioners have other questions for Mr. White? The other question is alcohol. Is there a, pro, a prohibiting of an alcohol sales out there, or it can have a I can have a liquor store there, or? We 
know, I don't have one asking me to be there right now, but, uh, you know, the county, I think, is uh, wet, so, and we, that, that property is in the county, so I think if there was a restaurant there that wanted to <coughs> serve alcohol, it should be, I would think it should be considered anyway. I mean, if they went through the proper channels to get their licensing and everything. Any other questions for commissioners? I'll open it up and see if we have any questions in the audience. Anything else? Do we have any questions from anyone in the audience? I'll just ask, do we have any opposition to this request? No questions and no opposition. Have we answered everything you need there? Thank you, sir. Thank you all so much. Mm -hmm. I appreciate the questions. Okay. Any comments or questions, commissioners, before I call for a motion? I do have one more question. Sorry. Yes. No, no ma'am. On the That's signage, fine. is each building going to have a signage, or is there going to be like a community sign? And this is a small monument area if we're going to have multiple businesses there. How is the signage going to be handled? Monument. You know, and we hoping to have each business's name on that monument type sign. And the monument sign will also, you know, kind of adhere to the type and the color of that building also. So you're not going to have six different signs? No, sir. I no, think sir. that's the question. Yeah. The zoning yeah. ordinance would only allow one freestanding sign for the property, but each sign or each building individually, if they had wall signage, identifying the tenants within that building, that would also be allowed, but freestanding signage would just be one. Any other, any other questions? Can I ask for a motion, please? Make the motion to approve the proposed general development plan amendment docket number 2019-08-DP based upon the testimony and documents presented in this public hearing. The proposed general development plan amendment is consistent with the adopted focus 2030 comprehensive plan as demonstrated by its compliance to the following objectives, objectives and action items presented in the staff report. Further, also find that there have been major changes of an economic, physical, or social nature within the area of the property in question and request that the findings of the fact and recommendation include evidence of, of testimony presented by the witness public hearing. Thank you, sir. We need a second. Second. Thank you. Commissioner Madison. Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Warren. Ma'am. Commissioner Volkert. Yes, Commissioner Unseld. Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Clark. Yes. Commissioner Balance. Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Vitale. Yes, ma Commissioner Rich. Yes, ma'am. Chair Runner. Yes, ma'am. And the motion carried. Thank you all. Thank you, Commissioner. Next item, 2019-34-Z County, Mary Fishback and the City County Planning Commission have filed an application to rezone a portion of a tract of land containing approximately 0.561 acres located at <coughs> 9136 Porter Pike from agriculture to residential estate. We we'll have the staff report, Ms. Ramsey. Thank you, Chair Runner. Um, normally I would say we had a pre-application conference on such and such date, but we do not have a pre-application conference for this uh, particular case. Um, so this is going to be pretty quick, uh, but I'm, I'll answer any questions you all may have. Uh, what we're wanting to do here tonight is uh, to match the zoning of the rest of the property. Um, you'll see that the rest of the property is uh, zoned residential estate and just wanting to take that agriculture and make it residential estate with the rest of this. Um, so at the time the plat was recorded in 2017, the property became split zoned. And so the property owner has granted uh, the Planning Commission limited power of attorney to remove the split zoning on this property. So this is just a cleanup? Yes, that is correct. Right. Um, so anyway, uh, just for the, for the record, um, portion of the property was rezoned in 2014. The proposal is compatible with the comprehensive plan since nothing is proposed to change as part of this application other than just removing that split zoning. Um, and so just to go through your staff report there's really nothing else in here um uh no development plan conditions no site characteristics review nothing uh of note just that um lu 111 112 113 
uh, 114, it's exempt from the flume compliance. Uh, the proposal is compatible with the surrounding uh, area, again, since nothing is changing. Um, so I think I've already gone through all the points to consider pretty much. Um, and I can say with certainty that the applicants are here because it's us. So uh, anyway, that's, any yeah, questions you all may have? Um, you know what, how that happened? Uh -huh. How it happened? Yeah. The, the it property happen? was, the portion was rezoned in 2014 and it's just the same property owner, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, you, you may be able to speak more it was, to it. It was rezoned in 2014 when we converted several agricultural parcels to RE. And so now we've had it happen where people have been trying to either swap land or reconfigure parcels where they're just doing minor changes and since the property is zoned RE, it makes it limited in what they can do. And so we kind of came up with this idea if somebody just wanted to trade the same acreage with a, a neighbor or maybe acquire a little bit of extra land from a neighbor, then we could just maybe go through this process to clean up the zoning after the plat was already recorded. So, and, and then I'll add another small piece. It's also an attempt by uh, by the Planning Commission by us all here to alleviate some of the burden of that expense whenever it's just a simple property swap or something you know similar to what these applications are tonight uh, why make someone rezone when nothing is actually really changing so we just took it upon ourselves to periodically have these cleanups if you will and uh, and and shift that to us any other questions have any opposition to this request? <laughs> no questions, no opposition. I'll ask for a motion. Make the motion to approve Bow Zoning Map Amendment Docket Number 2019-34Z County. Based upon the testimony and documents presented in this public hearing, the proposed zoning map amendment is consistent with the adopted Focus 2030 comprehensive plan as demonstrated by the compliance and objectives objectives and action items listed presented in the staff report. Therefore, the proposed zoning map amendment is in agreement with the adopted comprehensive plan. Further request this motion includes a summary of evidence and testimony presented by the witnesses public hearing. Thank you, sir. We need a second. Second. Thank you. Commissioner Rich? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Vitale? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Balance? Mm -hmm. Commissioner Clark? Yes. Commissioner Unseld? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Volkert? Commissioner Warren? Commissioner Madison, yes, Chair Runner. Yes, ma'am. The motion carried. And the next item, docket number 2019-35, Z County, Ruth Hughes Estate and the City County Planning Commission have filed an application to rezone a portion of a tract of land containing approximately 0.436 acres located at 8095 Smith's Grove, Scottsville Road from agriculture to residential estate. And again, Ms. Ramsey. All right. can, can we say ditto? Uh, I'm not going <laughs> to belabor anything. Literally, I think the only thing different is that just a plat was recorded in July of 2019 instead of in 2017. So everything else, um, like I was just saying in the last one, is the same. So this is another cleanup. Um, so you can just repeat everything that I just said, you know, for the last one. So, Commissioners, questions? Do we have any opposition? No questions, no opposition. I will ask for a motion. Make the motion we approve the pro proposed <coughs> zoning, map zoning map amendment docket number 2019-35ZCO. Based on the testimony and documents presented in the public hearing, the proposed zoning map amendment is consistent with the adopted focus 2030 comprehensive plan as demonstrated in the compliance with the, with the objectives and action items presented in the staff report. Therefore, the proposed zoning map amendment is in agreement with the adopted comprehensive plan. Further, I request this motion include the summary of evidence, testimony pre presented by the witnesses at this public hearing. Second. Thank you. Commissioner Madison. Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Warren. Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Volkert. Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Unseld. Commissioner Clark. Yes, Commissioner Balance. Yes, Commissioner Vitale. Yes, Commissioner Rich. Yes, ma'am. Chair Runner. Yes, ma'am. And again, the motion carried. Next item, docket number 2019-36, ZBG. James and Sally Brown have filed an application to rezone a portion of a track of land containing approximately 1.053 acres located at 2929 Small House Road from RS1A, which is single family residential, to RS1D, single family residential, with a general development plan. Have the staff report for Mr. Peterson. 
Thank you, Chair Runner and Commissioners. There was a pre-application on June 14th of 2019 for the property you see uh, here outlined in yellow. Uh, just to point out a few quick uh, surrounding items. Uh, you see it's on, as stated on Small House Road. You see the Massey Springs uh, development here uh, just to the bottom of the page and then the uh, single family uh, properties continuing down Small House Road uh, uh, at the top of the page. Um, the existing zoning of the property, as you mentioned, is RS1A, and it has been single-family residential uh, since uh, zoning was established. Um, the existing land use is also, uh, uh, is actually moderate density, uh, I'm sorry, single-family residentials, the existing land use, the future land use is moderate density residential. And uh, then we have the exhibit here uh, for you to look at as we go through the rest of the staff report. Um, I'm going to move on to uh, page two to the site characteristics review and look at the layout, uh, lot sizes and setbacks. The proposed lot configuration as shown uh, at, before you on your screen, the setbacks would adhere to the RS1D standard set forth in the zoning ordinance with the exception of the front yard setback and they are proposing in the development plan condition number eight to increase that front yard setback to 90 feet uh, as outlined in that development plan in order to uh, uh, be further away from Small House Road to be more in character with uh, other properties on Small House Road. Uh, moving down to natural features, there is, is an existing line of mature trees located along the southern and western property lines Applicants committed in development plan condition number seven that any trees 12 inches in diameter or larger within five feet of the southern western property lines will be preserved. Uh, and then just note that this application does comply with the majority of the items in the site characteristics review. Moving on to the site design and compatibility review, just mention a couple things here. Looking at the surrounding architectural features, the majority of the residents along the west side of Small House Road and in the Massey Springs uh, development are one story. There are some two story residences on the east side of Small House Road in Aspen Place. Uh, the applicants are proposing to allow uh, any new residents constructed within the development to be up to two stories in height, uh, which is noted in development plan condition number four. The building materials review, the applicants uh, uh, committed in development plan condition three that any new residence uh, be developed with at least 80% brick, stone, cement-based siding, or other modern masonry material. Uh, plain face block is prohibited as a vi visible finished material. Uh, that's uh, in, again in development plan condition three. There's a, a mix of different types of um, <coughs> uh, building materials in the adjacent properties. Building orientation, the existing home faces Small House Road and the applicants have committed in development plan condition number five that any new residents will also be oriented to face Small House Road. Proposed open space, the maximum allowable lot coverage uh, in the proposed RS1D is 75% and the applicants have committed to only be at 50% in development plan condition number six. Um, Looking at those development plan conditions, I will, won't repeat any of the ones already went over, uh, which is pretty much just one and two. So number one, access would be limited to no more than one access point on Small House Road. Development uh, would be coordinated with the Bowling Green Public Works Department. And then number two, any new residents shall have at least a one car garage. Uh, the remaining uh, development plan conditions I have already went over. Um, it, moving on to the Focus 2030 category review, uh, staff evaluated 15 items. The proposal complies with the future land use map in the moderate density residential category uh, and with LU111 and LU112, but the Planning Commission should determine if the proposal is compatible with the surrounding area uh, and if whether or not it complies with LU113. The proposal may comply with LU2. The Planning Commission, again, should determine if the proposal is a high quality development that will protect the character of the area. And then uh, moving on to page four, uh, proposal may comply with HN1, HN1.2, and HN1.3. 
Uh, again, it's up to this body to determine if the proposal is a suitable infill project that will maintain or improve the existing character and pattern of development within the area and along Smellhouse Road, and if it will ex strengthen existing neighborhoods and the district. Uh, and then uh, the last one I'll mention is the proposal may comply with HN 2.1 and HN 4. And again, you should determine if the proposed development is located in a suitable location and if it will enhance the array of housing options available in the area. Finishing up, I'll go back to the points to consider. I'll just uh, touch on the last two bullets. Again, the Planning Commission uh, should consider if the construction of an additional single family home will impact the current development uh, pattern of development and or if it will alter the character of the area as proposed. Uh, and then the last one is existing lots on the west side of Small House Road are 100 feet wide. The Planning Commission should determine if the proposed 50 foot lot width and the flag shaped lot is compatible with the existing lots on Small House Road. So that's all I have for the staff report. I'll be happy to answer any questions, and I know the applicants and their engineer is here as well. And this is going to be a single family? That's correct, addition. single single family. Mm -hmm. What kind of driveway? Are they going to share a driveway? Or in that 50 foot, they're going to put a driveway beside the other one? Uh, the applicant uh, may be better to answer that, uh, but uh, they will have to coordinate that with the Public Works Department. They haven't. Yeah, I, I, I do not personally okay. know that. They, they can answer that in a second. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for Mr. Peterson before we hear from the applicant? <coughs> thank you, sir. And we'll hear from the applicant. If you'd state your name and address, please. My name is James C. Brown. I reside at 2835 Small House Road. It's about seven lots up the street from this property. And I swear to tell excuse you. me, I do. Okay, yes, ma'am. That's go ahead. <clears throat> go ahead. Um, Planning Commission is, you know, uh, they've done a good job of evaluating this. They work with me. I've had several proposals since I bought this property at auction about five years ago. Uh, I've been approached about apartments, about uh, PDU units, uh, uh, tearing down the existing residence on this property and putting in a cul-de-sac and building several residences around there, some of the ones across the street in Aspen Court. Uh, one reason I bought this property is I went to the auction, not planning to buy it, <laughs> but uh, I was there and there was only a couple of people bidding on the property it wasn't going at a high price. The property was in poor condition. It hadn't been, had any uh, recent remodeling or probably any uh, remodeling inside the residence since it was built in 1965. But it had been standing vacant a couple of years. Uh, people who resided there had passed on. And uh, so I bought the property. I bid on the property because the people that were bidding at the time at the auction, uh, they were going to convert it to rental property. Well, I live up the street, about seven or eight doors, and I didn't want rental property on Small House Road. I, uh, uh, there may, I know there is some rental property there. I don't really have anything against it, except the whole area is changing. When I moved to 2835 in 1977, uh, I was in the country, and I'm still located in the county where my current residence is. But that whole character of the, the small house road has changed. First, we have the changing of the road uh, for a new intersection. We have the PDU of, uh, I think it's uh, Massey Springs. Uh, and then we have the one across the street, which originally I think was planned to be apartments, you know, but there was a lot of opposition against that and they changed it, you know, so. But anyway, uh, I, I have ever intention of preserving the nature of the, uh, of the area. Another thing, when I bought the property at auction, it was announced that it had two lots. I assumed it had two equal lots. Come to find out after I purchased the property, the current property line between the two lots runs directly through the center of the, of the existing residence. So I've tried to struggle the last several years, <laughs> try to figure out how to get another residence uh, on property that I bought with the intention of maybe having that possibility. 
and uh, I don't I, I just want to use the property that I bought and the only problem I see with it that doesn't comply with everything else along the west side of Small House Road there is all the frontage is 100 feet you've got 100 foot or 90 to 100 foot setbacks but all the property lots are 400 feet deep all going all the way up to almost to I guess Shawnee Estates so uh, the only way I could figure to to get use of the property for two lots is to, to rezone it to RS1D that the, the proposal so that's my agenda I I hope that you'll consider my application in a positive way and, and help me out on this. And uh, uh, that's all I have to say unless you have some questions. Thank you, sir. How are you proposing to do the driveway? Is there going to be a stairs along the way? Or are you going to put one in the middle going through that 50 foot? Or? That's up to uh, discussion, I guess. Uh, I plan to, my plan is it would be a separate driveway like all the other residences there and possibly on the other side of the property on the north side of the property, I guess, away from the existing driveway that's there. That's the way all the residences are up, up the street there. And uh, uh, I know space is a problem because the, of the narrowness of the lot, but that's the only, that's the only option I've got uh, under the current rules for- Talk to public I'm not about the driveway, no ma'am, but uh, you know. But I, I intend to work with them and work that out when the time comes. And I might mention too that it's not my current plan to build there myself. I just want to make the lot available for building. And I, and I certainly, like I said, I want to preserve the character of the area. And any sale of the property for a builder, it would certainly meet with some restrictions from the deed as well as you know planning and zoning. Any other questions? No other questions from the commissioners? Any questions from anyone in the audience? Do we have any opposition to this request? No questions, no opposition. Then I will ask for a motion, please. Make the motion to approve the proposed zoning map amendment together with and conditioned upon the general development plan, docket number 2019-36-CBG, based upon the testimony and documents presented in this public hearing. The proposed zoning map amendment is consistent with the adopted Focus 2030 Comprehensive Plan as demonstrated by the compliance with the objectives and action items presented in the staff report. Therefore, the proposed zoning map amendment is in agreement with the adopted Comprehensive Plan. Further request this motion includes summary of evidence and testimony presented by the witnesses public hearing. Thank you. I need a second. Second. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Madison. Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Warren. Ma'am. Commissioner Rich. Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Vitale. Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Volkert. Yes, ma Commissioner Unseld. Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Balance. Yes, Commissioner Clark. Yes. Chair Runner. Yes, ma'am. The motion carried. Our recommendation will be for approval. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. That brings us down to the public hearing that we'll be having to consider the text amendment on the uh, zoning ordinance for the uh, revised article one through five. Yes, ma'am. Uh, thank you again. I will be uh, brief. Uh, so uh, hopefully you uh, had a chance to read the memo that was supplied in the, uh, the packets. Uh, the uh, nature of this was a request from our local elected officials uh, to review changes to the zoning ordinance, uh, specifically relating to car dealership restrictions, certain restrictions that we had implemented in our, which I believe was 2017 when we made our last, uh, last revisions. Uh, but uh, staff was agreeable to looking at that specific change uh, to allow more flexibility for location of car sales. Um, the per, uh, and I just want to make sure and state that these proposed changes do not include any changes to signs or Airbnbs. That, those two <laughs> discussions will probably be coming soon, but uh, these, two, these changes are um, largely housekeeping changes. You know, we had a pretty large rewrite the last time, and you know, you always miss something. Uh, a couple of instances, uh, including the, the car sales one, you know, we always said we can't be afraid to make changes, and if we, don't get something quite right, we can't be afraid to make further changes. So that's kind of what this is. So this request gave us an opportunity to make, uh, tweak some of those other areas where we missed some items or maybe needed some clarification. 
Uh, so you were provided with a summary of those changes. I'm just gonna touch on a few of those and then ask for questions. But starting in Article 3, uh, we're, we talked about this uh, previously, but we're removing the newspaper advertising requirement for site development plans. We, uh, we have, uh, if this passes, all of the, all of the bodies, including this one, uh, we, uh, we will remove that requirement. We've been posting those on the, uh, on the website already. Um, we've also added a provision granting staff the authority to approve minor amendments to uh, university district and urban growth overlay plans. Um, this is where they're pretty much minor, no-brainer no changes, I guess, if you uh, want to look at it that way, uh, so we can kind of reduce some of the red tape in those cases. Uh, the, those requests were made by the Design Review Board and the Urban Growth Overlay District, so we can, we're going ahead and making those changes. In Article 4, uh, there's a clarification on for fences on corner lots. Uh, we've got routine variance requests to, to uh, allow fences to be taller in side yards or in that second front yard, if you will, on the, the non-front facing. So we're requesting to go ahead and, and make that change. Um, there's a couple of changes relating to setbacks. Um, so in some of the commercial zones, uh, in the incompatible uses, we kind of had some inconsistencies or zero setbacks, so we're proposing to increase those to at least five feet and then make the incompatible uses uh, uh, more uh, kind of the same or uniform. So in commercial zones, um, uh, going from zero to five so foot setbacks, we think will have very little impact because building codes kind of dictate that buildings be at least 10 feet apart or, or it gets more expensive, a lot more expensive quick. So most people are not building that close together anyway. Uh, and then <laughs> maintenance, there's not enough uh, maintenance room. So, uh, and then, you know, we require accessory structures to be five foot back, but in most cases, primary structures can be zero. So it's kind of trying to make more sense of that. Um, uh, also in Article 4, uh, clarification of parking exemptions when located in or near downtown. We drew kind of the half of the inner loop of the bypass, if you will, that, that we reduced our parking regulations uh, kind of in that TIF district area. Uh, you do have uh, a couple of changes at your, well, one was attached, I think, as a, uh, in your packet, and you can say, see where vehicle towing is just changing from uh, from vehicle repair to industrial service, and that's just to better classify that uh, for, um, for protections of adjacent properties. But the uh, other handout you had at your uh, desk is just a kind of a accidental omission from the first time we changed. We're adding in uh, the RS districts that are in that downtown area, they will be uh, get that same uh, parking reduction benefit uh, there too. Uh, and also the sewer exception, am I getting that right, Rachel, or is that, am I? The sewer exception would have been in what was mailed out originally. Okay. I, it was just an oversight. Okay. We were trying to Thank you. clean up the parking downtown and I missed it on this page. So okay. Thank I realized you. it today and we printed it and made it yeah. in time, so. Yeah. And then the, uh, the last one I'll mention, because I think it's kind of important because I, I want to uh, at least uh, try to uh, give the impression that we're, we listen and, and try to be business friendly as possible and allow businesses to not only get started but grow in this community too. So uh, in Article 5, we're adding flexibility for home office uses to allow limited on-premise merchandise storage in conjunction with a home-based business. So if you have something you sell on Etsy or eBay or, or maybe have Mary Kay or Avon, technically right now, you're not allowed to have any storage of those materials at your property. So this would uh, make a change to allow uh, some of that limited storage area for those, those types of operations. Hopefully that'll get you started, your business will grow well and then you'll need a business location uh, uh, um, and, and and uh, have a new retail stuff. So, uh, oh, one other thing I said I was done. But uh, one other thing, uh, we made all drive-through requirements match. In Article 5, we had uh, previously left out retail kind of pickup windows, uh, and so we, we're making those, those requirements match also. 
Uh, and then I already mentioned the vehicle, the ve motor vehicle sales uh, uh, change too. So that's all I have for you. If you have specific questions, be happy to answer them. But other than that, uh, I would just re request that uh, we approve these and give a positive recommendation. I failed to give, uh, give a motion page to you, suggested motion, but I do have one uh, written here if someone would like to see that and make that motion after you have any discussion or questions. Questions, Commissioner? Here's a question about the setbacks. We still have plenty of room for fire trucks to get through. And you're yeah. talking about zero and you're talking about five. Yeah, we're fire going. truck won't work there. Yeah, we're going from zero to five. So it's an improvement. Uh, fire trucks still wouldn't be able to fit around there, but during the permit review process, uh, the fire departments uh, do review those uh, permits or if we have a development plan, site development plan, fire department does review that for proper fire access. So we, we have that in place. I know out there by us, there was a, not the house, but the uh, outbuilding was too close to the house and it caught fire. Of course mm -hmm. it caught the house on fire, but, and the fire department said it was way too close. So that was my concern. Yeah. So I don't want yeah, an so outbuilding to cause right. a large house to catch so that, fire. So that that's a different requirement. That'd be a building code requirement. This, this is just how close you can be to the property line, not distances between structures. It kind of goes along with that, but, but it's, that's a different. Oh, it's kind of weird. Mm -hmm. You're fine. Well, ben, the only other thing that I would suggest that if it can be done, and, and obviously probably not tonight, but <clears throat> talking about giving the um, staff authority, mm -hmm. you know, the two cleanup things we did tonight, the staff should have authority to make those changes. I don't know that we can do that by state law. Uh, state law, this body, then as well as the elected body, has to vote on any changes to the text or map amendment. So I, I think we have to, we have to keep with that. We, we have the ability to make some interpretations if it's just like a little bitty sliver or something and we can say that went with the property line as we make adjustments to the map but we can't technically rezone property without uh, the legislative bodies. I make the motion to uh, approve this. It still has to go to the city, the county, and the four local. Got it. Okay. Any other questions? Any questions from anyone in the audience? No questions, no comments. I'll ask for a motion. There you go, Ms. Clark. I think that. I make the motion to approve the proposed zoning text amendments based on the testimony documents presented in this public hearing. The proposed text amendment is consistent with the adopted Focus 2030 comprehensive plan. Further, I request that the motion include a summary of the evidence and testimony presented by the witnesses at this public hearing. Thank you, ma'am. We need a second. second. Thank you. Commissioner Rich? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Vitale? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Balance? Yes, Commissioner Clark? Yes. Commissioner Unsaid? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Volkert? Yes, ma Commissioner Warren? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Madison? Yes. Chair Runner? Yes, ma'am. The motion carried. Thank you. And brings us to new business. Yes, so we have, do have an item under new, a new business. Uh, we are getting close to uh, needing a building subcommittee and to make a decision on what we want to do uh, for our building situation. Uh, we do have uh, some initial numbers on our existing building uh, for renovations. And then we have, uh, staff has also been working at two other locations in the downtown area, which uh, will remain uh, uh, I guess a secret for now, uh, but uh, we, we're working to get numbers on those too, so we think we'll have up to three options to consider. Uh, we're gonna get uh, true numbers on, on those and look at uh, kind of the one year, that first year cost uh, for all three options, and then also a five year and a 10 year actual cost, uh, and then uh, look at those. So what we'd like to do is get a, a building subcommittee together to look at the numbers, but then also tour those uh, facilities and, and go over the changes that we're proposing so we can make that decision. I would like to ask Mr. Dean Warren, Mr. Christian Bogart, and Mr. Tim Graham if they would serve on that committee, and I too would like to be on that committee. Uh, that's open if any of the other commissioners would like to serve on that I committee. Would then uh, so we could get together and get you on there okay yeah. expect uh, to probably meet within a week or two uh, 
and you know I will try to keep those as brief as possible but two are in the building and going over numbers might take an hour or so but we'll we'll uh, we'll let you know on we have Ms. Vitale okay Vitale. good we, c we just can't have more than uh, six because that makes a quorum and there well we have yeah so issue. we would have a quorum but we could still do it we could just we just have to advertise it and advertise where we're going to meet in a time okay and and, and, and that's okay so one, that's two. one set. I, mean, I don't mind back an hour. I think that's fi I think that's six together so that that's okay yes, uh, six, we're good. six is perfectly fine we have six correct yeah, if we just the seventh yeah yeah puts us at a quorum mm -hmm you know the commit subcommittee yes. will just meet and get the details we'll still obviously have to come before the full planning commission to decisions, get decisions right, and, right. and authorizations and all that good stuff okay so we have mr. Warren mr. Bogart mr. Graham Ms. Vitale Ms. Clark and then myself thank you all anything else sir well, I have any com commissioners anything before then meetings adjourned thank you all Thank you.